In this lesson, we will learn how to bake animation in Maya. I really like the changes that we've made to the animation. The expression has helped to make our hovering plate feel more lifelike. If we were to go ahead and jump back to the expression editor, I mean, take a look. Let's go ahead and make sure again this is set to select filter so we can go ahead and grab our expression. So something as basic as this can help us to create something that is a bit more fun to watch. And that's exactly what we have done. Fantastic. By the way, if you'd like to rename your expression just to add more clarity, you can always move up to the top after selecting the expression. We can name this something along the lines of expr underscore hover. From there, once you hit enter, the name has been saved. Now, what I'd like to do is add a bit more of a variety towards the end of the animation, where there's not really a function that we can use to have that happen. And we can't just go in and delete the expression to clear all of that out, because that means that, well, that's a lot of movement that we did like that we no longer have, right? So instead, watch this. Let's go ahead and undo to bring back the expression. And what we'll do is bake this channel to convert it to keyframe data. And that way, we can start to edit the keys that we would like in order to change the animation wherever we'd like to change it. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll head over to the graph editor. From there, let's go ahead and focus on the channel that we would like to bake. And now we can go to Curves and choose Bake Channel. If we were to go to our option box, here's where we can specify the range that we'd like to bake, whether it's based off of the time slider or a specified range. So we can set a start and end time here. I'll have this set to time slider. We could also choose how many frames will receive keyframes. And that is regulated by the sample by parameter. So right now it's set to 1, meaning we'll have a key every frame. If this was set to 3, we'd have a key every third frame. Now you have to be really careful with this. If you're object is driven by a dynamic simulation, chances are you're going to want to leave this at 1 because even if one frame is slightly off, that might affect the object pretty drastically. And that's very noticeable if the object falls and hits a surface. If any of those keys have been removed, that object might interpenetrate with the surface and now things look undesirable. So you'd want to just go ahead and make sure that your sample Y is set to 1 for special animations like that. Now for ours, we can increase this to let's say 2 or 3 to start optimizing our function curve, but I'll show you another way we can clean it up. So we'll have this set to 1, and we'll now choose Bake. So take a look. We've now created a keyframe through this entire range. What has happened to the expression? Well, if you were to go ahead and jump back to your expression editor, there we go. Take a look. You'll notice that it no longer exists. Maya's cleared it out. And take a look at the x-axis. Again, now it has been converted to keyframe data, but that's a lot of keyframes, right? So I'll go ahead and show you how to clean this up. But before we do, let's go ahead and jump back to the graph editor. So again, we wanted to tweak the end of the animation, right? If we wanted to, we can work with the lattice deform tool. You can come in and grab the keys that we would like to edit and then use the lattice deform manipulator to come in and start tweaking just a few sections. So you can see we have this really soft type of editing tool that we can use to change the timing as well as the, the values of our selected keys. Sweet! There's also the retime tool. So if we were to go ahead and grab that, take a look, we can go ahead and double click to create handles. And now as we start to drag at those handles with the left mouse button, we can start to adjust our timing this way. So we could start to slow down the end of the animation just a bit. Sweet. And then we can click on the X's to remove our retime bars. Fantastic. And then once you're done, you can press the Q key to go back to your select tool to disable that tool. Wonderful. So at the end of the animation, we should get a different type of result in the x-axis. It should move a little bit slower, and it most certainly is. But now we've created a bit more variety. How cool. So in this lesson, 
We've learned how to bake animation in Maya. I'd also like to point out that if you were to go to Edit, Keys, you can also access the same baking tool here. But when we use Bake Simulation, take a look, there's several more options that we can use. So if you'd like a more advanced bake, I'd highly recommend you take a look at the Bake Simulations option box. But for something as simple as an expression, quote unquote simple that is, you can always work with Bake Channel and that will kind of give you the same result. But keep in mind that with Bake Simulation you have a few more options that you can play with. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson I'll show you how to optimize all of this animation data.